How's it going everyone? Today we're going to take a look at some of the coordination that's happening between some of the BRIC countries, okay? And this has a lot to do with, obviously, money. <laughs> Everything has to do with money. Everything in life has to do with money, unfortunately. But anyway, so we're going to take a look at this expansion of trade between China, Russia, and India, okay? So Russia is expanding tra trade routes with China and India. So what's interesting is that China was warning, you know, when Pelosi was going to visit Taiwan and do, you know, they, were, they were sending uh, jet, fighter jets and they had a bunch of naval ships out in the ocean. Who knows why? Show of force. But maybe, just maybe, it has to do with this. It has to do with the expanded trading routes with Russia. So the countries have supported, uh, reportedly launched new sea corridors to ramp up economic cooperation. So the, these Russian companies, they organize regular charted ships, which is wild, to ensure supply of raw materials to China and India and vice versa. So whew, with, their, with their payment system cooperation, this again is another expansion of the two-tier global system that is occurring right before our eyes we're, we're seeing this in real time and according to the sources continuous disruptions this is all done because of continuous disruptions due to western sanctions okay person close to the matter told the outlet that Russian freight shipper Inteco and China-based Swift Transport Group have jointly created linear operating subsidiaries to offer container shipping services between Russia and China. Interesting. So what, what's wild is that they said this is a response, okay, it's an appropriate response to the rising demand for smooth and safe trade between the two countries, safe trade. They don't want these things disrupted. Beijing and New Delhi have opposed the Western sanctions to Moscow, say they will continue normal economic and trade cooperations with Russia. This is big. These are countries with billions of people. Jesus. You could argue, what, what, that's almost half the planet, just with India and China. Massive. Volume of trade picked up significantly this year, with the two nations ramping up imports of discounted Russian energy. So it's sold at a discount to China and India, but <laughs> the Germans, the Europeans are suffering insane price hikes, okay? And of course, they're, they're getting some of the energy cut off. So the, the imports cut off from Russia. Customer data shows that China spent around 19 billion on Russian oil, gas, and coal in the f in the three months to the end of May, double the amount from a year earlier. Probably being sold at a very low cost to the Chinese. India shelled out 5.1 billion in the same period, more than five times the value from a year ago. So they they gotta be getting it at a good price while the Europeans are getting screwed. At least the citizens are getting screwed. It's pretty crazy. So what else is India and China buying? Guess what? Lots of gold. Lots of gold. India boosts gold purchases. Bullion imports soared by more than 6% just from April to July. And <laughs> look at this. Close to $13 billion in that in that period of time and I didn't know this but they are the second biggest importer of gold Wow so it's almost a billion dollar increase and this contrib and contributed to a record trade deficit of 30 billion Wow the Reserve Bank of India reported wider trade gap than than had expanded the country's current account deficit hmm. so the surplus of 1.2 GDP against a surplus of 0.9 in the previous fiscal year from January to March 
central current the current account deficit narrowed on a sequential basis to 13.4 billion or 1.5 of GDP against a 2.6 GDP that doesn't matter anyway China ramps up gold buying okay according to Bloomberg imports from Switzerland have jumped to their highest level since 2016 now what happened with Russia they also increased their gold buying and this started before they invaded Ukraine so China shipped in more than 80 tons of gold from Switzerland last month, which is wild. Citing data from the Swiss Federal Customs Administration, volume is more than double June total, eight times more than in May. Wow. Surging gold imports to a five-year high indicates that the Chinese demand for the precious metal is picking up. Who knows why? The market is still not great, but it's definitely a lot better than it was. And they're basically saying it's better than it was during COVID. The report highlighted that Chinese prices for gold carry a premium of roughly $7 compared to international prices. Interesting. Gold prices slipped below $1,700 an ounce. This is from July. But you know what? Gold has kind of quieted down a little bit. Regardless, China, India, Russia, gold, gold, gold. It's pretty wild. Non-stop accumulation of gold. So your fiat currency is basically getting worthless. Zimbabwe, <laughs> 50 bajillion trillion dollars for a dozen eggs, right? Anyways, obviously the, the dollar itself is going down and printing more money isn't helping anyone. So guess who is footing the bill for all this anti-Russia sanctions. They, it, it's the citizens. It's the citizens. The European citizens are probably suffering the most. The EU should compensate its citizens for the energy pandemic resulting from the anti-Russian sanctions over the Ukraine conflict. Guess who said that? Salvini, Italian former <laughs> prime minister, deputy prime minister pretty interesting because if you haven't seen it check out my other video where the energy prices in Europe are just insanely high the monthly prices so we'll see all right guys that's it for this one thanks for watching smash like subscribe hit the bell I'll see you in the next one Maybe.